Good morning. Very, very interesting paper just published in Science, August 13, 2021, addressing a very, a very topical um, uh, issue that is the role of diet in modulating uh, the production of a cardiovascular risk factor, of a new cardiovascular risk factor called TMAO. This is a metabolite of choline and L-carnitine. There are, there were several papers showing that uh, high TMO is uh, responsible for an increase in uh, uh, cardiovascular risk. In a classical New England Journal of Medicine paper, individuals who had plasma, high level of plasma concentration of TMO had a 20% higher risk of developing myocardial infarction stroke independently of the classical risk factor, cholesterol, blood pressure, glucose. Now, there was an argument among scientists because not only meat products are rich in choline and alcarnitine, but also fish is also uh, uh, rich in uh, uh, L-carnitine and, and, and choline that uh, in several studies was responsible for higher TMO concentration in plasma, okay? So uh, these controversies, how it comes that TMO is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease where we know that fish is protected against cardiovascular disease. And this paper, this science paper probably is, 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 is the answer, one of the answer to this uh, dilemma. So what they, 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 they have uh, published in this paper is that the problem is that a high fat diet, typical Western high fat diet is changing the uh, proportion of bacteria living in the gut that are responsible for the metabolization of uh, TMO. Uh, so as you can see here, a high fat diet impairs mitochondrial uptake of oxygen into host enterocytes and elevates nitrate in the mucus, which in turn weakens healthy anaerobic gut function. So basically what happens that, you know, because of the high fat diet, the healthy anaerobic uh, bacteria, they decline instead of these, uh, these uh, different type of anaerobic bacteria, in particular, the, the pathobiont Escherichia coli becomes dominant. And this dominant Escherichia coli leads to an increase in the amount of choline that get catabolized into the TMO that is a pro-atherogenic pro molecule derived by the bacteria for the gut microbiome. So in some way, I think this paper explains why a high fat uh, diet, Western diet, rich in animal products, choline uh, and L-carnitine, by changing the gut microbiota is increasing TMA production. And, and instead of a fish, a diet rich in fish, but low in fat, and so rich in fibers and fat, because of the different type of bacteria living in the, in the proportion of a healthy versus unhealthy anaerobic bacteria has a different outcome. So I think, you know, this is a very interesting paper, well, very well done, of course, is in mice and mice are not humans, even if here they say that, uh, that people eat, what people eat has an immediate selective effect on the microbial populations. This is probably not true. It's data that, you know, we and other we have uh, collected are suggesting that in humans, the effects of changing diet is not as quick as in mice. It takes longer time, but there is no doubt. You know, we have unpublished data showing that people who are uh, uh, changing their diet 
for three, four years on a vegetarian, vegan, raw food diet. They have a drastic change of the gut microbiome, uh, but few weeks of, of, of uh, dietary changes doesn't result in such a dramatic change in the gut microbiome. So it takes months and years to change the gut microbiome. It's not like in mice in a couple of days where you know you drastically change the gut microbiome. Nonetheless, I think it's very important and it shows the interaction between certain nutrients like a high fat diet, changing the gut microbiota by changing the mitochondrial oxygen um, and mucus composition of the enterocytes that is selectively changing the composition of the gut microbiome in a healthy and healthy way and therefore then certain nutrients that get metabolized into potential uh, risk factor for cardiovascular disease and many other chronic diseases. As always, thank you for listening. Um, we'll, uh, I will be with you with new papers uh, soon.